A good market. A good market has desperate, impulsive buyers, people that want to buy right now. The reason that I mentioned this is because there are a lot of hot markets out there that are hot because there's a lot of people interested in it, but they're not buyers. There are markets where uh, people do a lot of research, markets where, uh, like I said, a lot of interest, where people are maybe even wanting to participate in a discussion group or something, but they're not impulsive buyers what we want is ideally setting up a membership site is uh, a crowd of people that have that desperate I gotta have this now I need a solution like right now and that's just for a good market we're not even talking about a great market yet other advertising outlets besides just pay-per-click so in other words lots of other opportunities where we could advertise like uh, you know uh, banners or something on a website that gets a lot of traffic and that kind of uh, setup you know we're looking at uh, you know paying for like a thousand impressions or something like that fulfillment as an information only product that's kind of a no-brainer uh, with a good market we need to be able to service our customers with an information only product not something physical that we absolutely have to ship out you know not something that we have to buy and then resell uh, we want that the information because the cost of reproduction of information is basically nothing <laughs> so when you can sell something over and over again and there is no cost to production you know that's a that's a win situation for us proven internet buyers just uh, people that are willing to pay money over the internet and to, to, you know to purchase what it is that you're selling there are some situations that people are uh, there, there's actually some niches where people just don't like to buy online they prefer doing it in person or even over the phone and that's not what we want we want them uh, right there to click the button make the purchase and all of that stuff be handled automatically now this is a good market when we find uh, you know we're discovering what niche we're going to get into with our membership site and uh, these these criteria are for what I would call just a mediocre market really it is a good market but for uh, like if there was something I absolutely loved and it fit these uh, four things I could go ahead and do it just because I happen to love that niche and I want to get involved in it and I'll probably still make good money at it but First time through this, folks, we want to make buku bucks uh, so that we've got a nice cushion of residual income coming in. So we're looking for a great market. Now let me show you what a great market has. A need for ongoing support. Ideally, with uh, what like we don't want a one-off wonder, right? Where uh, the ebook that they get, or maybe even a series of four or five ebooks, is going to give them everything that they need to know. That's not what we want. We want something where there is a continual need for them to come and maybe learn more, or there's a service that they continually need, uh, maybe updates, things like that, ongoing support, so that when they sign up, you know they're gonna go through and month after month they're gonna get a new additional benefit from us every single month that way we got some retention right for a good market uh, what we looked at previously there might be an information product that I'm looking to uh, create and sell and that would be fine if I'm selling it as they pay one fee and they I deliver that product to them that's great good market is fine but for a membership site we want these criteria here uh, because it's going to fit in with our model much better. No seasonal demand. That means it's evergreen. You definitely don't want to touch something you know, that has to do with Christmas or uh, Easter or winter or summer. Because what happens? Well, you kick up a whole bunch of customers in the summer, and then as fall comes in, that the, your membership starts trickling down and then it gets lower and lower and by the time you know you're through winter there you know there ain't nobody there hanging out no more 
and your momentum is totally lost. So it's going to, you know, good luck trying to get back up uh, come spring and summer. You want something that is not contingent upon any kind of holidays or seasonal stuff. It needs to have a membership appeal. So in other words, some type of connection where people can feel that they are a part of something. And that's really, it's not that difficult to uh, create that. It's kind of like, you know, uh, National Association of Photoshop Professionals. I love Photoshop, right? Just being a member of NAP, it has this appeal because there are a lot of little perks that you get. And being a Photoshop person, uh, it, just within that arena, there's something that comes along with that. You just want to do the same thing. But, again, it's so easy to do. Hunting clubs, uh, radio control, airplane clubs, that kind of thing where there's like, I'm a member. You know what I mean? The yacht club, of course. Racquetball, uh, all these things. <laughs> I mentioned everything that I like. But uh, any kind of uh, membership appeal like that, you want to grab a hold of it because you're actually going to manipulate that. You're going to use that as a tool to keep people, your members, for a longer period of time. You use that membership appeal to make them hold on to their membership. And a great market has exactly what it takes to succeed. Bottom line right there. These additional things that I have mentioned on top of a good market are what we need to make sure that our membership site is going to succeed. So we're looking for the qualifications of a great market. Now we're going to talk about the two markets, and this is kind of like a different, I'm not talking about the good and the great market. I'm talking about the two types of markets within a great market. Okay. First we have consumer markets. Diets, cleanses, you know, the healthcare, finance, hobbies, that kind of stuff. With though, this is the pe the things that you know the consumer is going to utilize. We've got a lower typical value because a lot of this stuff is just you know for fun. It's for uh, hobbies and stuff. I'm talking about and uh, things that people just like to get into as a, you know as something personal. For that reason, lower typical customer value, 10 to $30 a month is what you're going to be able to charge for those kinds of memberships. Now, huge potential customer base because we're going to be able to reach, like everybody is going to be interested in something. So if we set up a membership site, uh, it, it's going to appeal to a lot of people. And I do mean a whole lot of people. Uh, and especially you can find some membership sites, so, some niches. I'm not going to give away any secrets right now, but uh, you can find some niches that will literally appeal to, you know, just about everybody. The other type of market is a business or trade market. Here we're talking about basically making money. We're talking about advancing in your career or, you know, being a better real estate agent being a better internet marketer, learning how to trade on the Forex more uh, effectively, uh, learning how to be an internet marketer, learning beginner stuff. You can definitely do uh, beginner stuff because you got people that don't know how to do you know, anything online. They want to learn how to do something online. Or it doesn't have to be an online deal. It can be learning how to do anything, but it's career improvement. Higher typical cost uh, to the customer because... We're talking about making more money. Anytime you make a career, you know, advancement, you got to pay more because you're going to make more. So here we're looking at thirty to a hundred dollars a month typical membership fees for uh, sites that have to do with, uh, you know, making more money. You can market high ticket items, expensive stuff, because when you're dealing with people that are talking about business, they're willing to pay more money. Right. So if you've got, you know, as a businessman, if somebody said they had a thousand dollar product for me to buy, that was going to make me an extra thousand dollars the first month. And then after that, it was going to continue to make me a thousand dollars extra or save me a thousand dollars every month or whatever. I'm going to say, OK, a thousand bucks, no problem, because, you know, it's going to make me the money back as a businessman. I'm willing to invest. So. Uh, we can take those high dollar items and market to the people in our membership site 
uh, and make you know healthy commissions off of that. Not as many potential customers because it's business, right? It's people. Most people. The fact is, most people like to just you know goof off or whatever. They don't. They're not really motivated to be an entrepreneur. You right now listening to me, you're in the minority. That's just a fact because most people, what a lot of people like to do, they all say they want to make money, they want to have their own business, but what they mean, let me translate for you, what they mean is I would like a turnkey solution that has zero effort and I make 10 grand a month. That's what they really mean. So since they're not really motivated to do what it takes to really create a business, uh, they're, they're, that's the majority of people. So you are in a minority, congratulations. That means, though, that you have fewer potential customers. You're going to make more per customer, but there are not as many of them out there. You will get better conversions, though, because, again, it's not a hobby or it's not a, uh, you know, I'd like to this or that. It's business. It has to do with making money. There are two things. Um, it's actually a phrase that these two things... It's not that I'm going to get you, tell you to get into the how to make money niche or the diet niche, okay? But get the spirit of what this says. You can never be too rich or too thin. Now, all that this is really saying is that there are a couple of things that uh, there's no end to. <laughs> and if you can help somebody to do these things better, then that niche is going to be uh, a successful niche for a membership site because you're going to help, you know, you're going to appeal to so many people and it's going to be like an ongoing thing. If you did set up a how to make money membership site and you could actually help people to do it, then, uh, you know, they sign up, they're a member, they start making a little bit more money, you start putting together some other training for them, they're going to continue to get advice from you and to you know, just constantly be improving upon that. What we're going to do in the next video is start actually looking at how you can weed through all of the opportunities out there, all the potential, and select your target market for your very first membership site. There are a lot of ways that we can do this, choose a target market, uh, but understand that I've been doing this a long time, so we're not going to, you know, I want you to be a success with the first membership site that you set up. So since I have done a few of these, um, what you want to do is start with what you know. What that means is you have to get in your mind, like you're going to be dealing with this thing day in and day out. You're very likely going to be related intimately with your website. Uh, you're going to, you know, probably learn a lot of things because what I recommend to people is always the very first one you know set it up yourself it's not that hard it can actually be a great learning experience and then you know a little bit more of what's involved you'll know more of what you would like to see and if if it works out really good for you and you decide to branch out and do another membership site then you're gonna even if you have somebody else uh, do a lot of the technical stuff, for example, you'll know how to give direction and you'll know what you want and how you want it to work because there's a lot of ways that you can do just about everything. So you're going to be involved in this. You want to start with something that you know. If you are a carpenter and you know, you've been doing building houses all your life, then consider things like that. Consider knowledge that you have. The fact is with information marketing, all that we are doing is we're taking knowledge that we have and we're selling it to someone who doesn't have that knowledge. Now, in the old days, it used to be an apprenticeship where you would go and you would work for somebody and you would learn how to do what they know how to do for either no pay or very little pay uh, during your apprenticeship while you're learning how to do it. Well, nowadays what we have is people pay money to learn how to do something. So do not take it for granted or underestimate anything that you know how to do because there are today people out there that would like to know how to do that, 
and they don't. And they're going to do some searching, and they're going to look around, and they're going to try to find the things that they need to learn how to do it. So if you can offer that to them uh, in a nice, neat, tidy fashion, and bundle it together with the membership perks that we're going to be uh, talking about in our in our training here, you've got a winner. You've got people who want to know what you know how to do, and they're going to pay in order to do that. So we're going to start with what you know, and I don't suggest... If you if you know how to do a lot of different things, you're gonna I'm gonna have a checklist for you, so you're gonna actually be able to kind of weed that list down to the most uh, potential, the one that looks like it's gonna be the easiest. But I mean, pick something that you enjoy doing. Okay, if uh, you're a welder and you work on an assembly line and you're like a really great welder, but you can't stand it, then you don't want to you know get into doing something that you know you're not really happy about. It, it, by the way, you're going to start with what you know, but that, we're not going to limit it to that. Okay, we'll we'll deal with that on the next slide. Bookstores and libraries are excellent places to choose target markets, or at least get some ideas. Because here's what you can do. One of my all-time favorite ways to to get an idea of a market is to go to a big bookstore, and I mean huge, right? Like a humongous Barnes and Noble. Go to the magazine section. And just look. I mean, seriously, you know what you can do? If you absolutely can't think of anything, close your eyes, spin around, just point at the wall, open your eyes, and whatever magazine you're pointing at, there's your niche. I mean, it really is that simple. If there's a magazine, this is actually my 30-second uh, do-or-die test. I'm giving you a, a head start. But uh, if there's a magazine for something, that's just about a guarantee. So uh, go to a bookstore. Check out libraries. Look at all the content that's there. These are things that typically, you know, it's it's at least a great place to start. But with a magazine, for example, if somebody's gone to the trouble, you know how expensive it is to publish a magazine? If they've gone to the trouble of doing that, good chance that you got a big niche. And if there's like five or six magazines within that niche, I mean slam dunk. Compile and sort your list of potential markets. Just based on, you know, what you know, ideas that you've seen at the bookstore or the library. So you've got this huge list now, right? We're going to start to even build on that list a little bit more. Here's some specifics with the what you know stuff. You might think, you know, I said, start with what you know. And you're standing there and you might be going, I don't know, nothing. You know, I just punch numbers at work and I don't know anything. You do. Listen, start with... Hobbies and interests. What are the hobbies and interests that you have right now? So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't really have to be something that you know how to do, but something that you're interested in doing. If, uh, for example, you're fixing to get into, you know, bird watching, I don't know. Uh, if that's something that you've always had an interest in and, and you'd like to pursue that, then by all means, write it down. You, I, I don't know about you. But I want to do something with my life that I enjoy doing. And uh, you can, did you know that you can build up an entire business based solely on something that you enjoy doing? Ha! How about that for a novel idea? Absolutely you can. You can be uh, very lucrative just doing something that you enjoy doing. And by all means, if I could help one person to better their life by doing something they truly love and making a living at it, then my mission is complete. What would I love to do every day if I didn't have to work? Whoa, how about that one? So now you're going to sit there and you're going to think, I don't have to work. I got all the money that I need. What would I like to do every single day? Because you're going to be dealing with it. Now, you're not going to do it every day. You know, you don't have to go out and do it every day. But what would you be happy doing every day uh, if I had the opportunity? Like, for example, with me, maybe I, I play racquetball two, three times a week. Would I like to play racquetball every single day? I probably could, uh, and I wouldn't get tired of it. What about I, uh, I got my pilot's license last year. What about flying every day? Could I fly every day? I sure could. <laughs> yeah, I could go flying every single day. So could I set up a membership site 
uh, and really get into that? Yeah, I could. Here, here's the thing. You have got the people that are successful in this are people that are passionate about what they're doing. So if you're kind of indifferent about something, that's not going to work. You have to be passionate about it. I love playing guitar. I don't, unfortunately, have as much time as I'd like to to play guitar, but I could do it every single day, and I wouldn't get tired of it. That's for sure. Uh, so I could set up a membership site for playing guitar, uh, and that, that would be something that I actually, uh, I've been meaning to do that for a while, but uh, i got so much other stuff going on. Um, that would be a great membership site if you're into playing guitar. Anything that you would have an interest in that you could say, honestly, I would love to do this every day. Maybe there's something you do do every day. By all means, give that a consideration because uh, you're going to be passionate about it. And that's that's one of the things that uh, one of the key ingredients to being a success with a membership site is you being passionate about it. What are some of the real life experiences and achievements that I, me, myself, have gone through or attained? Uh, if there's anything that you have done, maybe you uh, went through bankruptcy or maybe you were facing bankruptcy and you got yourself out of it without having to file. Maybe you got, like me, you got your pilot's license. That was a great achievement for me. Uh, anything like that is attractive because there are other people that want to do it. And don't you think that they would like some help from somebody who has already gone through it? Absolutely. Maybe you were 150 pounds overweight and you lost it all in six months. Oof, that would be tough, huh? Um, that would be fantastic if you can share that with other people. That's exactly what we're wanting to hit on. So just sit, give, give it a thought a little bit. Is there something that I have uh, a, a difficulty I've come up against? Maybe you were fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in debt on your credit cards, and you got it paid off in like a year, and you want to share with people how you did that. There are other people out there right now that are in debt that much, and they want to know, they want your experience, how you went through it. What problems have I solved in my life? Look back through your whole life and think, where did I come up with a problem and actually get a solution for it? Uh, really, there are a lot, I mean, this covers so many areas. Listen, uh, it doesn't matter what you have done. I mean, there are so many areas that this covers. If there's anything you've tried to do and you solved a problem, it could be on the work, uh, at the workplace. It could be a hobby that you have. It could be something around the house. It doesn't matter. Something that you have solved. Write that down. Is there any problems that I have not solved in my life? That's actually a really good one. You know why? Because there's a, there's a wound there for other people more than likely. And if you can build around that, you know, giving, offering advice on uh, how we can, you know, get a workaround or deal with it, learn to cope with it, or if there is a solution, uh, having discussions on how to how to solve the problem, uh, that's something that people w would really, really jump into and get involved because it's something that's emotional. It's something that, th you know, they're having difficulty and they're struggling with it as well. Now, once you get this list done, and this seriously, anybody, I believe, can make a pretty big list from just these things right here. It, it doesn't take much. And uh, you might not think you've actually accomplished anything, but, uh, you know, in life, maybe there's nothing you can write down. But really, if you give it some thought, I think you'll be able to come up with something. If, however, uh, you grew up in Siberia and uh, you never had any interaction with other human beings and... Um, I can't even imagine that would be the case, right? Because you would you would definitely come up with uh, some difficulty and have to overcome it. But you know what? One thing about successful people, a lot of times because of their mindset, they solve problems, they jump over you know the uh, hurdles, and don't even think about it and can't even recognize it. There are things that like people. If you're like that. People probably look at you and are like, boy, I wish I could be like that. Uh, but you don't even realize it. You don't even notice that you're dealing with difficulties in solving problems. So if that is the case and you can't think of anything, think about your friends and family. 
What hobbies does blank have? Put the name of somebody in your family there or put a friend there. This allows you to step back and look at somebody else. What hobbies do they have? What are some of the uh, you know, real life experiences that your friends and family have gone through? Do you have a friend that had cancer and he beat it? Uh, you know, something like that. What problems has Johnny solved? What problems has Johnny not solved for that matter? You know, what difficulty, what things are people struggling with? What are they going through? Look at your friends and family because that's going to allow you to uh, kind of, you know, step out of yourself a little bit and not be confined uh, to that me, me, me mentality where maybe you can't think of anything. Uh, more than likely, you're going to, by this point, have a pretty big list. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm suggesting you write down everything that you can possibly think of for all of this stuff. Now, we're going to build on that and expand your horizons even more. What I suggest that you do, the sites that I'm going to give you right now, are going to be used as somewhat of a qualification for the things that you've written down, but you're also going to use them for more ideas because here's what's going to happen. A lot of times you can't think of something and you need a mental trigger. The sites that I'm going to pull up here in just a minute are going to be that mental trigger for you. Uh, they're going to let you see things that you didn't think of. Okay, for example, ehow.com. That's a site where just people go and they do tutorials on how to do stuff. People request tutorials. If somebody out there is requesting how to do something and somebody has put together a tutorial, guess what? Okay, people are interested. Now, you're thinking, well, they'll just go to eHow. Well, you just go there and you see the quality of all the stuff there and you'll find out that... Um, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. But it shows us that people are interested. Plus, just because, I mean, all that means is competition. And competition is not a bad thing. I would rather be in a niche that had pretty hot and heavy competition than one that had no competition at all. Because competition means there's a lot of people that are interested in it. Mygoals.com, so you wanna.com, hints and tips. These are all the same kind of thing. Videolearning.com, great place to get ideas of uh, content that you can create, things that people are interested in. eBay, you can go there. You can check out eBay Pulse. Uh, you can just go on eBay and see what's, uh, what's pretty hot and trendy there. Magazines.com, the next slide is going to reveal my do or die, my 30-second do or die test where you will see where Magazines.com totally comes in. But basically, go there, type in your keyword, and see what comes up. Uh, or just go there and browse. If you can't think of anything, go there and browse. So as you're going through these sites, like maybe there might be things that you have not thought of, but you're going to see a magazine, for example, uh, you know, on uh, some kind of hunting magazine, and you'll go, ah, Bobby is a deer hunter. You know, uh, things that you didn't really think of, but it's going to trigger it. MagsDirect.com, MrMagazine.com, SubscriptionConnection.com. All of these, same kind of thing, lots of mental triggers and ideas. I have made this literally so that a troll under a bridge will be able to uh, you know, go through this and think of something that is, is going to end up being a great market to set up uh, for your membership site. Here is the 30-second do or die test. Simple as this. Is there a magazine or association that serves this market? So here you've got your list, and more than likely it's going to be pretty big. All you have to do is go to Google, type in a keyword and the word magazine. Or go to Google and type in the keyword and the word association. If sites come up, and if you can see, or magazines.com, if you go there and you can see magazines in that niche, it's basically a slam dunk. If you can find magazines for that uh, keyword term for that idea that you had, then there's going to be a lot of interest because, like I said before, it's very expensive to uh, coordinate and get set up and print a magazine. They only do that if there's going to be a, a large circulation, uh, like very large. And with some niches, you will find there are actually multiple magazines. That 
is a, uh, a killer situation because what it means for you is that the, the, the market was so big that one magazine couldn't service it. So they had to have, you know, guitar player, then they had to have guitar world, acoustic guitar player, electric guitar player, uh, all these different, I can't even tell you all the guitar magazines that are, that are available. Uh, and what does that tell you? Tons and tons of people. And so that's a good thing. That means I set up my membership site. And don't be scared if there's already a membership site for there. Most of the time there will be. That's not a big deal. In fact, you can actually work with those people. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But So even having a competing membership site, not a big deal at all. All right, something for you to do now. Here's where we're going to just go out. Make sure that you've got at least 10 target markets uh, that you came up with uh, from the last two steps. The uh, looking for your stuff, uh, you know, your interests, and for your friends and family, and then whatever. Do a 30 second do or die test on some stuff and narrow it down to at least 10 target markets that pass that 30 second do or die test. Okay, so you're going to have, I imagine, okay, you, you might have 30, 40 things written down by the time you go through all those things that we talked about. But make sure that you do the, do the uh, qualifications. Go to Google, type in a keyword in the Word magazine, see if there is a magazine for it already. If there's not, don't write it down. Scratch it off. Uh, but you want to get to where you have at least 10 target markets, 10 potential markets for you that pass that 30-second do or die test. It's not going to be hard, trust me. All right, coming up next, we're going to see how we can take that list of 10 and pick the one that's going to be the uh, first membership site that you set up. Okay, so we've got your list now of at least 10 markets that fit the past the 30-second uh, do or die test. And if you don't have those, I want you to stop right now. I mean it. You pause this video and you go and you do it right now because... No point in, in going on here. You got to be a uh, you know you got to be a doer, not a hearer. Okay, what we're gonna do is now start to weed out some of the markets and just and that, and it's not that we're saying any particular market is a bad choice, but what we're wanting to do is find the absolute best match for us that has the greatest potential of success. I'll be honest with you. You could set up a membership site and it not work out. Very possible. Okay, so we want to give it the absolute best potential uh, or opportunity, I should say. Review the traits of a good versus a great market and then look at your list of 10 or more markets that you've written down. In evaluating each one of these markets, what you want to do is scratch off all the ones that are just good. If there is a, a market where you can't see that there's a need for ongoing support, scratch it off. So review those traits, narrow your list down a little bit, and then scope out the affiliate networks. See if anybody else is already offering uh, something similar. And again, that does not mean, as a matter of fact, what we're looking for is we hope that there are membership sites available for that niche. Go to ClickBank, go to CJ, go to Modern Click. You are looking for other people doing it because if somebody else can do it and they are successful, that means you can be too. If there's absolutely, you know, no membership site for that niche, more than likely, I know there's going to be the temptation to think, oh, I found the golden egg. Uh, probably not you didn't, okay? Probably somebody set one up and it didn't work out. That's probably what happened. Now we're going to sort the list. What you're going to do is, let me get the rest of this stuff up here. My slide must have gotten backwards or something. Uh, what you're going to do is give, like evaluate each thing that's left in your list and give it one point for everything on the left that it matches up to and give it two points for everything on the right that it matches up to okay so if uh, if my niche was going to be hunting for example 
I would go through here and I would say related affiliate programs. Yes, there are, uh, you know, if I do some research and I find out that there are affiliate programs out there for hunting stuff, I give it a check and I'd put, you know, a one by hunting. Advertising opportunities. I go to Google and I see if people are advertising. I go to other uh, hunting websites and I see if people are advertising there. If they are, give that a point. Check it off. Desperate or impulsive. This is going to be speculative. You have to consider this. You know, I, I personally would say hunting is not desperate and impulsive. So I wouldn't check that off. If it's something like uh, you know, an acne problem, uh, and and you want to set up some kind of membership site for dealing with extreme cases of acne or something. I don't know, but uh, then that would be desperate or impulsive because you know they've got embarrassment in there, and they've got you know maybe they got to get ready to go to the prom, you know, whatever. But if it's not, then you just don't check it off and you don't give any points. Membership mentality. I would say hunting does have that. Uh, it's like a hunting buddy kind of thing. Need for ongoing support. <sighs> a lot of this stuff is tied together because I'll tell you this. With the magazines, that's one thing that shows you there's a need for ongoing support. Because like there are some things that people will just be able to learn and then that's it. They have mastered it and they go on. But there are other things that require that ongoing support with hunting. Uh, the magazines, I'll tell you what, they just, uh, I don't know, it seems like every year, I subscribe to quite a few magazines, every year, it's basically the same kind of story that they're telling, especially with hunting, but they're just trying to do it in a different way, or there's something new where they're trying to put a twist on it, but it's basically the same kind of thing, so need for ongoing support, I don't necessarily think that I would put hunting as need for ongoing support, just me personally. And uh, it's again, it's going to be kind of subjective. You're going to have to make that decision yourself. Year-round sales, evergreen. Now, here it's going to get a little bit tricky, uh, with hunting at least. What I would have to do is I'd have to consider what kind of hunting membership site am I going to set up. If I'm going to do, you know, just hunting in general, then I might be okay because there is opportunity to do different kinds of hunting at different seasons. And I could have different sections in my membership site and a forum and all of that. And potentially there, uh, I could go ahead and say year-round, yes, it's definitely going to be okay because, you know, they've got the, the deer season and then they're going to do turkey and they're going to do... Uh, you know, coyote and fox and all these different things, if I'm tying it together. If, however, I was doing a hunting hunting website, hunting membership site that was specifically for uh, deer, that probably wouldn't be a good deal then because that is going to be seasonal. There's a deer season, and it's not very long, at least not long enough for me. Uh, and what that means is that during the off-season, not probably really going to get a lot of uh, traffic to my membership site. Nobody's going to be like busting the doors down to get in because uh, maybe a month or two even before deer season opens up, I might see some people coming in uh, because they want to read up and learn and stuff. And then throughout the season, fine, but then it's going to taper off after that. I don't want that, right? So depending on the kind of site that you're going to set up, you got to think about these things. If it is year-round, put a check, put a one bes beside it. Okay, now, these, these over here, these are worth two points because they carry more impact. Do I have a personal interest or a skill? In other words, is this something that I really like and enjoy, and do I know how to do it? If that is the case, check it off. Give yourself two points for that particular idea. High ticket market. Are there expensive things that could be sold in this niche? Uh, with hunting, of course. I've got rifles, I've got bows, crossbows, uh, and yes, you can actually sell this stuff even though it's a membership site. If nothing else, you can go to CJ and you can get uh, you know an affiliate link and you can promote a crossbow to the, the people on your membership site that are bow hunters. And when they click the link and they go to the website, 
uh, for the, the CJ vendor, you're going to get a commission on that. So if there's high ticket items, two there. A story to tell. The reason this is so powerful, and it's in the right column here, is because it's a high selling point. If you've got a story to tell, like, uh, for example, I say say that you uh, were fixing to declare bankruptcy or your house was going to be foreclosed on or whatever, and you got yourself out of financial hardship and now you're making, you know, 200 k a, a year. Um, if you've got that story that you can personally tell, very powerful, very, very powerful. Existing membership sites, if there are already sites out there, again, remember I said, that's not a bad thing. That doesn't scare us off. That excites us. Yes, there are successful membership sites out there. All I got to do is differentiate myself, do something a little better or a little different, and then uh, get the traffic. And I'm going to have, you know, I'm probably going to be successful as well because there's people interested. Is there an existing association or magazine? You need to find them. And what I would say with this is because actually everything that is most of the stuff that's on your list right now should have already passed the 30-second do or die test. But there still could be some things on there, uh, you know, that you were just got an idea uh, when you did the, the brainstorming kind of stuff and looked at stuff, looked at, you know, eHow and all those different kind of sites. If, though... There are that you, that you just find one magazine. Give yourself just one point for that particular idea, and if there are multiple magazines, then give yourself two points. Uh, and by I would say actually, let's say one to two magazines for the first one, and then three or more is worth two points, because that means the more magazines, the more potential, the more room, and that means that. The, the probably the supply is going to be less than the demand and ideally that's what we would like is where there's a, a hole essentially and uh, you need to be able to fill it okay so now you're gonna take all of your list and if you do this in Excel it's totally totally easy but basically you're gonna take your list you're gonna add up all the points get rid of the ones that have been scratched off or eliminated already okay and then you're gonna sort the list based on the number of points that that particular idea has and what do you think you're gonna do you're gonna take the one that has the most points that's where you're gonna start that doesn't mean that you write off all the other ones in fact I suggest that you do start like an Excel spreadsheet and put them all in there uh, and save that and leave it because once you get another you know once you get this membership working and it's pretty much on autopilot you're gonna set up another one and you've already got your list in front of you, uh, sorted even, so you know where you're probably going to start next. All right, what we're going to talk about in the next video is ways that we keep our members involved and uh, longer retention. Uh, in other words, a lot of uh, membership sites, they get people to come in, they stay for two or three months, and then they end up leaving. We want to make our website, our membership, so compelling that people don't want to cancel that membership. Content is king. We hear that all the time, don't we? Uh, if you've been online for any length of time in the internet marketing arena, you've heard that phrase, content is king. What does that mean? It means that really what you have to share is more important uh, even than how you share it. For example, the quality of your videos, the uh, presentation is not as important, not saying that it's not, okay, but it's not as important as the actual content of what you have and the quantity of content that you have. In other words, having a lot of good quality content is going that's going to be what puts you at the top both search engines and as far as making customers happy now that applies to any website it also applies to a membership site having a lot of content is extremely important and you want to get that content fast 
In other words, I set up my membership site this weekend. I want to get a ton of content in there before I, you know, start marketing it. I want so much stuff. Whenever a new person comes in, I want there to be so much stuff that all it's almost like they're overwhelmed. Now, I don't want to make it difficult for them to find what they want, but I want there to be a lot of stuff there. The reason for that is that one of the things that is going to keep them is the fact that they've got this storehouse of information that they haven't been able to go through. And it's going to be that, you know, one of those, you know, like someday I'm going to, I'm going to be able to get through this. Someday I'm going to look at, uh, you know, this book and that book uh, and watch these videos. Someday. You keep that going by having a whole lot of content for them to go through where they can't possibly keep up with it. Now, in order to get that, especially initially here, you might have to change your thinking a little bit. More than likely, you're going to be having the mentality that you've got to actually create all the content. Uh, or maybe you're setting all this stuff up and you're thinking, you know, I've got to do all of the work because I can't afford to hire somebody else. But that is actually not the case. It is going to be more beneficial to you to change that thinking and maximize or leverage the efforts of other people in order to get the results that you're looking for. Successful people, wealthy people, are successful and wealthy because they have learned how to leverage other people's efforts and make money from it. You magnify things whenever you do that. I might be able, let me let me give you a perfect example. When I first started out uh, as, I actually started out as a trainer for software applications. Okay, before I ever got into internet marketing, I did training for software applications. Now, I would charge a certain rate to do a training for clients, and that rate was contingent on how much content was delivered, right? Pretty simple to understand there. It didn't take me long to figure out that what I was really getting paid for was creating the content because there was knowledge that I had, uh, for example, using Microsoft Excel or uh, Photoshop, something like that. Okay, There was knowledge that I had, and that's what my clients really wanted, and that's what they were paying me for. And it didn't take me long to figure out that the money that I was making was because of the content that I was making. So, I mean, it sounds pretty simple, right? Self, Self-explanatory. But I didn't want to pay somebody to edit my videos. I did all of that myself. So I recorded the videos, and then I would go back and edit it. And let me tell you something. To get an hour's worth of training in Photoshop, it might take six, seven, eight hours by the time you research what you're going to do, put put together you know a project, and go in and record it, and then go back and edit it again, and then render it in a uh, the final video format. So you could be dealing with easily eight hours of uh, you know involvement there to get that one hour of video. Now what? was my specific skill required for just that one hour of video. You know, it may be a little bit of planning beforehand before I start uh, recording. However, I did, I thought, oh, I, I'm, I'm losing money if I pay somebody to edit for me. But guess what I found out? I found out that I could record, I could take a couple of hours and do a recording and pass that video off to somebody else to edit it for me. I could go back and I could record another two hours and I could pass that off for them to edit and I could go back and I re could record another two hours. So in one day, what previously was taking me all day long to get one hour done, I was getting you know three or four hours done in that one day. What did that do to my income? I think you can do the math. The same thing is going to apply here. It... <laughs> Don't get in your mind that you have got to do all of this stuff first. And don't get in your mind that spending money is a bad thing. Um, I know it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, the economy is pretty rough right now. 
but it's not that expensive and it will save you so much time and you will have uh, the benefits from it is incredible. So the two game plans that we're going to talk about would be you trying to set everything up yourself or you doing a little bit of outsourcing. And I am going to totally lean towards doing some outsourcing and not only outsourcing, but there are some other types of uh, content that you can get a hold of that you can actually go out there and purchase and have instant content. Uh, that's one thing I did for one of my membership sites. Uh, I needed some content for it, and I was able to go out and for like 27 bucks buy thousands of articles. They weren't all pertinent to my uh, specific membership site, but most of them were, and I could put them in there. And they are content for my members to digest. You know, if you uh, if you're in a membership site. And uh, you sign up today, and there's like half a dozen ebooks in there, and you're, you know, trying to go through them. And then all of a sudden tomorrow, you sign in, and then there's like 200 ebooks to go through. All of a sudden, you're going to be like, whoa, information overload. And uh, by the end of the month, you're going to be, you know, I got to renew because there's so much more stuff in there uh, that I haven't had a chance to go through. And you're going to have this feeling like I lose it if I don't continue my membership. Uh, so that's another thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what's a guru and what's a ghostwriter. A guru, I'll just give you a, a brief synopsis here. A guru is somebody who really knows what they're talking about. A ghostwriter is somebody who is a professional author who you pay to essentially do research and then create content. And I'm going to show you why going with the guru is actually better for you long term. Then we're going to talk about some secrets to obtain and retain your members. All right, website, uh, membership site, actually, options here. Let's talk about some things. We could do a subscription service. This is like the recipe of the month or investment alerts, you know, for Forex or stock trading or private label rights. Every single month they're going to pay and they are going to get something new, some new content that's just for them. Commercial tools, things like Aweber, ad tracking tools, hits counters, simple things like that. Even uh, there's uh, there's been a rash of some websites that do the uh, URL shortening, that kind of thing. That's essentially a commercial tool that is a membership site. You can pay a fee like with Aweber. You pay a certain fee uh, every single month and you have access to their autoresponder and all the tools that they've created on their website. So that is an option for us. Content based. This is kind of the model that I'm focusing on where we create something where the members want to come and interact. We create a community. It's more than just about reading the ebooks. It's more than just about watching videos. It's by interaction. Uh, some people, I've seen set up a membership site where the membership site is just content. And while that could work, what works better is if you have the content and you build a community by having maybe a forum that goes along with the membership site. So people can go in there, they can interact with one another, they can talk about the content, how they have used it. They build up community and that is a lot for retention because if I'm if I'm on this forum and you know I've been here for four or five months and now I've got like fifteen hundred posts uh, I'm interacting with the community, I probably don't want to lose that standing. Right, And you can even, when we talk later on about secrets to obtain and retain your members, there are incentives that you can give to people to uh, you know, keep them. Maybe for a forum, for example, you give them different levels. After they attain 2,000 posts, they're bumped up to a different level. And once they attain that, they're not going to want to cancel and then you know, at some future point start over again. You need to have somewhat of a publisher mentality. Basically, what we're going to do to get the content very quickly is, if possible, buy the content, repurpose, and repackage it. So maybe change the name. If you're not familiar with the term uh, private label rights or master resale rights, I'm going to both tell you about what it is, and then later on, we're actually going to I'm going to show you some places that you can go to get that kind of content. 
Uh, but what you're getting is the rights to use something for your own purposes. In fact, you use it as though it is yours. You're actually, it's not unethical, it's not illegal, nothing like that. You are actually paying for the rights to do that. Just like with, uh, you know, with a commercial on the radio, they'll have music and sound effects that they use to make those commercials. They, you would be surprised, right? Um, there would be, if you go to Walmart and you buy a CD to listen to, it's 10 bucks, right? If you buy a CD of what's called royalty-free music, it's 100 bucks. It could even be only like five songs with like different, you know, different length versions of each of each song. But why is it a hundred bucks? Because you are not only buying what it is, you're buying the rights to use it with your own products and make money with it. Okay, same thing with PLR. You are purchasing the rights to use that content in whatever way you deem best. Now they've got different rights that they allow, so you, so you do have to read uh, the licensing for it. But what you're essentially wanting, if possible, is master resale rights, uh, or at least private label rights that mean you can totally rebrand it, change the author's name, change the title of it, uh, and even uh, do a little bit of repurposing. Like we might want to go in there and take three or four private label rights articles and combine them into an ebook, something like that. Also, Consider hiring someone to write the new content. Um, you're obviously going to have to find someone. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about in the next uh, slide here is hiring somebody, hiring an expert. What we don't want is the freelancer that goes out and essentially does what is called log and blog, where they, um, or blog and log, however you want to want to look at that they go out and they do some research they read what other people are they they might not know anything about that niche they find out what other people are writing about it and then they put it into their own words and create a unique article now that is fine for getting traffic with article marketing that's fine to do but for your membership site you got to have some good stuff and you got to have somebody that knows what they're talking about so essentially what you would do is when you go to find somebody uh, to, to get them to write content for you, you find out, number one, if they are involved in that niche and they know about it. You want to make sure that they actually have it as, you know, if you, for example, if you're a guitar player and you're going to do a guitar membership site, you're going to find somebody that is a guitar player. So yeah, you might write some content for the site, but you're going to find somebody else to write some more content for it. And this is really, I mean, this is what magazines do, right? They have a lot of different authors. A lot of those people are freelance authors, uh, but they're related. They know the niche, and that's what you're going to be doing. You're kind of like a publisher. You're going to find somebody that knows the niche, that wants to write about it, you're going to get, pay them to create content for you. So I'm saying get a guru, not just a, an average freelancer. Don't just go out there, you know, f for example, let's take the Grand Canyon. Okay, this is a great analogy. If somebody took a picture of the Grand Canyon and then they took that picture and they put it in a book and then you hired somebody off the street to describe the Grand Canyon and that person went to the store and bought the book opened it up looked at the picture and then wrote an article for you describing the Grand Canyon would that be as good of an article as what the photographer could write absolutely not because the photographer was there they saw the you know the picture cannot capture the Grand Canyon everybody knows that you want somebody who has been there, no matter what it is, somebody that's actually been there and knows what it is that you're talking about. There's, it's, a, it's two different worlds as far as somebody going out and just reading what other people have written and then putting it together uh, as opposed to somebody who actually knows what it is that they're doing. This will take a little bit longer, but believe it or not, it's actually a lot of times cheaper. Because you can find people, you know, if 
Johnny over here, Johnny Bowhunter, if he is not uh, an, a professional writer, then he, and you just you're talking about his hobby. You're talking about something he loves to do, and you're going to ask him, "Could you write me, you know, uh, some articles on hunting?" He's going to be like, "Yeah, uh, I get paid to do that," <laughs> you know. Uh, and a lot of times that's the way it's going to end up is uh, to get the content made, it's not going to cost you as much uh, because professional writers, I mean, they typically charge a lot. Now, here are some freelance sites, guru.com, ifreelance.com, elance, and Renacoder. These are some of the more common ones, more popular ones. What you do on these sites is you set up an account there, you post a job or a project and you give a description of what you need done and then there will be people uh, come in and look at the job and they will bid on doing that project for you so you get people competing uh, and it's really usually more beneficial to the buyer than it is the freelancers because there's so much competition out there you can find somebody who's really good uh, at, at what they're doing and is not very expensive now that doesn't mean that you should go with the cheapest person that doesn't mean that uh, you don't sometimes pay a little more to get better quality you do but you can't just go by price uh, I've had situations where a more expensive individual gave me worse stuff than a, a lesser expensive uh, person uh, so you gotta talk with them but what you're gonna do is write in your request in your description you put there I want someone who is a bow hunter okay I want someone who's been playing guitar for at least 10 years here here's what you're gonna get there's a variety of different kinds of people that are on these freelance sites looking for uh, jobs to do they're freelancers right lots of different people they've got hobbies now normally they're maybe on there to do something technical maybe they've got a specific thing that they're on there for that they do but you know maybe they uh, they write articles on uh, coding for websites or something you know it could be very technical but they do have hobbies and if you can find somebody that is in your target niche and they happen to be there as a freelancer boy you just found a great combination because you found somebody that knows how to do what it is right that your niche is all about but they're also a freelancer and they're there to do work great combination another thing you can do is go to forums that are already out there uh, that are in your niche and find people who post a lot on those forums a lot of times you can talk to them about uh, creating some content for you when you are submitting your proposals at these uh, different membership sites personal communication is the absolute best way to validate their claims because you're gonna get a lot of people that yeah 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 we can do it yeah I can do it for you you'll have it by tomorrow um, and especially overseas you get a lot of people that uh, they can just yeah I'll do it now and and I totally know everything about what you're talking about and I understand and in reality they don't okay their initial communication will say that they do and they'll be super dirt cheap but if you want to find out if you're going to get any good stuff, you got to actually uh, communicate back and forth with them. Another thing you want to do, you got to be careful with uh, copywriting stuff. People will go out there and they'll bid on your job. You give them, say, you know, I want uh, five 300 word articles on whatever. They'll go out there and they'll go on the internet, they'll do a search and they'll find those articles and they'll submit it back. Here you go. Uh, or maybe they've got a database of private label rights articles and they'll just pull some up and go here there you go pay me now please and uh, you gotta be careful that you're getting completely original content so you gotta you gotta be able to check for um, and there's a there's a website I want to try to give you I'm gonna flash it up on the screen right now because I forgot to put it in here but it's where you can you can basically paste in content and it will go all over the internet and search for that content in other places and if I think it's copyscape or something like that but I'll I'll have it up here for you um, 
what it'll or actually my editor that I'm paying to edit this so that I can create more content. <laughs> he's going to put it up there for you. Uh, what it'll do is it'll check to see if that content is duplicated all over uh, anywhere on the internet. And if it is, then you found yourself someone who is plagiarizing and you're not going to pay him. Uh, but in talking with him, that's the best way that you get a feel for if they really genuinely understand your niche and they use, you know, they use the right ling lingo or jargon uh, in, in referring to things. Ask for an outline. This is a great way also to not only get a feel for if they really know what it is that they're going to be writing about, but if you've got 10 people submit a proposal and all 10 of them submit to you an outline, fantastic, because what you can do now is take those 10 outlines and kind of merge them together, combine it, and you're going to get one very comprehensive outline uh, for maybe an ebook that you're having written or you know a whole co a course that you're going to create or whatever. Set deadlines and milestones. If you don't do those with these people, then a lot of times it they'll just drag their feet and it's not going to get done. Uh, and especially it's not going to get done very quickly. So just set the don't be unrealistic. It's not like you're being a slave master. You know, if uh, if if you ask them how long uh, can it, how long will it take for you to get this done? If they say three days, add an extra day in there. Uh, add uh, honestly, I would add like 25% to whatever they tell you, uh, just to give them some more time. Uh, so anyhow, that's it. And then stick to it. Like if it's a big project, you set milestones, and they get a little bit of money as as the whole project goes. A lot of times what you're going to see, though, is if it's just like write five articles, it might be 50 bucks for all five of them, and they're just going to get paid when it's done. With these sites, just to give you a word of caution, if you're not familiar uh, with how this stuff goes, don't ever pay anybody up front, okay? Most of the sites do uh, what's called an escrow, and if, let's say you say uh, the job's 200 bucks, okay, and you pick somebody, they're going to do it. You will put that $200 in an escrow account, and then they'll do the work. Once they submit it to you and you approve it, you have to say, yes, this is what I wanted, then they get the money. So it's win-win for both of you. You can't rip them off, and they can't rip you off because you know the, the website itself has the money in escrow. If you were to go to a forum and find somebody to do the work for, there has to be a little bit of an element of trust there, but what I have found typical out there is a 50-50. So you'll give them 50% deposit to get started, and once they deliver the goods, you give them the balance. Here's some other places that you can get some really, really good quality stuff done. Book authors. A lot of people think both book authors are untouchable. Really, they're not. In fact, a lot of them. <laughs> A lot of them would really appreciate the work, um, and you would be surprised. They like the credibility, too. Uh, so if, especially if you can let them go ahead and use their, their own name, you know, in, in an article that they write, it doesn't have to have any contact information because you own, right? You own the article. But if you let them use their name in there, they'd really like that. They get the credibility and... Uh, you know, it's just another pay and gig for them. Even if you think, well, they've got a published book, that doesn't mean they're making squat from that. They could be making thirty thousand dollars a year off of that book, uh, and they they like the extra work. Magazine article writers, same thing there. These people are usually freelancers anyway. Uh, so, if there is uh, you know a magazine in your niche, don't be embarrassed to approach a, a writer in that magazine to have an article written for you. Uh, you'd be surprised you know, how much you have to pay for stuff like that. And I already mentioned the blogs, or forums at least, and also blogs, same kind of thing. People that frequent those a lot, if you find somebody who has a lot of posts or makes a lot of comments on blogs, it's somebody who really cares about the niche and they're active. Uh, that's an excellent candidate for this kind of thing. Putting your content together. We have to think about some things. Where will the content go? How will you deliver the content? And in doing this, we're going to get a little bit technical and kind of come up with uh, some ideas. We're going to start that in the next video. The, the format that we want to pick uh, for the delivery of the content, how it's going to be delivered, 
and then we're actually going to get into a little bit of technical stuff in the background uh, for at least my recommendation of the way that I do things. What we're going to talk about now is just a lot of different ways that we can structure our membership site for the delivery. Um, actually, the way that we'll deliver and you know how the content will be put out there and made available to people. We could do, for example, a monthly newsletter. That can actually be a membership where they're just going to get an email every single month uh, with helpful information or possibly uh, links to other sites and other content that you have. Maybe you did a video, so in the newsletter there's going to be a link where they can click, or the content can be delivered right there in the newsletter. Industry expert interviews. You can actually build a website around mostly providing kind of like news coverage, really, but within your niche. So uh, depending on your industry, a lot of people would be willing to pay a monthly membership uh, subscription to get, you know, just, just for interviews with industry leaders, kind of like, uh, you know, with news and uh, newspapers, that kind of thing, they're dealing with things that appeal to everybody, very broad. So what we've got in uh, different niches is where really there's information that people would like, just like with the news, but since it's not big enough, it's just for their little area, um, nobody's doing that for free because they, you know, they can't get paid for the advertising and all that kind of stuff. So what they do, though, is they can provide the same kind of coverage that uh, a news media might do, but they do it as a paid subscription. So expert interview, excellent. You just go there. You know the questions uh, to ask. You ask them, let them answer, let them talk, uh, and then you provide an audio of that, maybe provide even a transcription of it on your site. Training videos and or tutorials. Let me tell you what, video and tutorials, super hot today. If there's something that you know how to do, if there's an application you know how to do, or if there's a technique that you know, no matter what it is, it doesn't even have to be you know computer related. If there's something that you can do that a video uh, would help out with explaining how to do that or provide a tutorial, or especially you know, like Photoshop, super duper hot, all kinds of tutorial sites out there. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Uh, some of them have free areas, which is another thing we can do. We can have free areas in our membership site, and then we have a paid area. A lot of times with uh, guitar sites, I see a lot where they have uh, just a free area where they've got a, f a couple of lessons for free. Anybody can watch them. And then when they're ready to move on to the next step, that's a paid subscription. Basic training. In this type of format, maybe let's talk about Forex, for example, foreign exchange. Uh, somebody wants to learn how to trade. Uh, you could do day trading. You could do, uh, you know, really anything, become a real estate agent, whatever. And you got the basic training, the core material that someone would need to be able to learn, you know, start doing that. Granted, with the basic training, there's going to be an end to that, so your retention might be very low. So you would have to come up with something else. Uh, you know, start it out as basic training, and then in a couple of months, maybe you've been able to put together some more advanced things that people would be interested in and staying around. Or you've at least got more of a community involved and uh, figured out some ways that you can keep people, you know, hanging out even after they've learned the basics. Reports and articles, you know, maybe every month, you send out a report, it could be, you know, like a stock tip or something, or what's going on in a specific industry, that kind of stuff. Online tools, calculators, tracking, that kind of thing, uh, something that people would be able to use every single month. Let me give you a real good example. Uh, one of the things I started using a couple of years ago was an online application that would do invoicing for me. And it's like seven, eight bucks a month. But what it does is it keeps track of customers and, you know, it lets me create an invoice. It keeps track of all the things that I would be selling uh, as a consultant, right? And th this is like outside of online things that people are buying at websites that I have. I do consulting. And in that, I have to create these invoices. So I found this particular application and it fit in very well with what I was doing. So 
uh, it lets me create an invoice, pull the customer, create an invoice, put in consulting and time, and then it does, it sends the invoice out via email, and it also facilitates uh, them paying with PayPal or credit card or check or whatever. Uh, it takes care of doing all of that. Uh, very nice and handy. Monthly subscription. It's a tool that I started using. Nice thing about it is with stuff like that, if you can get in there something that uh, gets them locked in kind of, like there's statistics or there's data involved in it, and they're not able to, like they would lose that if they were to, you know, like tracking, for example, what I've got up there. If uh, if you start using a utility that provides you tracking and gives you statistics and lets you see a whole bunch of information about all your websites, chances are the longer you use that, the longer you're going to keep using it because it gives you a lot of valuable information that you lose if you cancel. Members only forum, that's, a, that's totally so easy to do. You just set up your member site install a forum script that's just uh, it's a real easy piece of software to put on your server and all you're essentially doing is letting people interact with one another but you're facilitating that uh, and of course we can have other things that we add in with it to keep them involved and keep them active a ask the expert type of membership site where you're allowing the individual consumer to get direct access to a real industry expert so you've got somebody that really knows their stuff and you're allowing people to ask them a question and they're gonna help them out that's an excellent service uh, a lot of things for you know maybe people couldn't afford to hire a consultant in a certain niche they couldn't afford to hire a personal guitar trainer to come in or a fitness trainer or you know whatever but here they're able to ask a question to somebody that really does know and it's going to give them an, uh, an answer. Recommended resources. Totally simple to set up. Uh, I have uh, one website in particular where I do this very thing. It's got recommended resources that I use and the thing is not only can you have this like for example let's say wholesale distributors. So you might have a membership site for eBay sellers. Okay. And in that, you've got a recommended list of wholesale distributors so that they can go and they can buy. That's going to be something of value to them. Not only that, though, you could have an affiliate relationship with some of the, the resources that you recommend. So whenever somebody clicks the link to go there and make a purchase, you're going to get a commission off of that. Let's talk about basic training. If uh, this is your main product, and in fact it's a good idea to have as a core training the basic for what somebody would need to get involved in your niche let's say you were gonna set up a real estate membership site in that you've got this core training this is your flagship product this is like your main uh, bread and butter if you will this is what people need the essential information if they want to get involved in your market because what you're gonna have folks is when you set this membership site up you will have all kinds of people every different level with a guitar magazine if I was to go to the bookstore right now and I was to go to the magazine section and look for a guitar magazine I could be a 30-year guitar player and I would still be interested in what is in that magazine. However, uh, I could bring somebody with me, and he walks up, and he's just thinking about starting to play guitar. He could buy that magazine. He would be interested in it, and he would get benefit from the content that's in it because in magazines, they always have stuff for beginners because you get all levels. Same thing's going to happen with your membership site. You're going to get all levels, and you want to be able to service people that don't have experience in that niche. People that are just, they're interested, they want to find out about it, and you got to have that core essential information for how to get involved. Maybe, uh, you know, if it's guitar playing, you've got some training in there that shows them all the different parts of the guitar, how to tune the guitar, how different sounds are made on the guitar, all that stuff, how to read guitar notes and tablature, 
Uh, but you've, of course, you're going to build on that with some more advanced stuff to keep everybody happy. But you've got to have that core stuff in there. When they join, you send them directly to your basic training. And what you can do if you use, uh, I'm going to recommend a script that I use for my membership sites. And it's really, really nice because um, whenever people sign up, I've got, like for the membership level, what it gives you is a configuration for after they register, what page do you want them to take to take them to? And then after they log in, what page do you want to take them to? So when they register, you can actually send them directly to your core training, right? As soon as they register, they get logged in and they go to the core training. That's where they're going to find out, you know, the, the, the new stuff that they don't know nothing. But if they are experienced, they're going to see other stuff there. And the next time that they log in, they're going to be taken to a completely different page. You know, you might dump them into just a ma the main members area, for example, or you might dump them into another page where uh, you've got some specials going on or s whatever the, m the new monthly uh, training is that they would be interested in. So you've got a little bit of control there. But as soon as they join, they get plopped into the main, in the main members area, your basic training. Remember... What I said a long time ago was that you can use this delivery method even if it is just an ebook that you're selling. So you could create an ebook for beginners, for example, and instead of just they buy it and they get an email that has the download link and then they download a PDF, instead of that, you can have it set up where they're actually subscribing to a members area. Okay, so they they sign up for the membership area, they get dropped right into this section where they can download that main core content. And then you get to work on other ways to keep them there. Remember that with a membership site, the individual person is worth more than if it's a one off sale because they're going to stay. Most of the time they're going to stay at least 2 months even if you had it where it was just, you know, one ebook that they get. Most of the time they're going to stay for the second month cuz either they forget about it or they don't there's no rush so they don't do it. Uh, but we want to provide other things that keep them involved and and make it necessary for them to or at least they feel it's necessary to stay and that is the obtain and retain part about this. We want to discourage cancellations. If you can think of things that they're going to lose, really things that you can provide them that they'll lose if they discontinue their membership. Let me give you an example. On an internet marketing membership site for newbies, okay, it's tailored towards newbies. You have it set up where you are a reseller for a web hosting company. So here's what you do. You say, you sign up for my membership, it's $37 a month. Included in this membership is a your very own website and hosting. As long as you're a member, your website is there. Okay, so now, Johnny signs up today. He gets his website set up. He uploads it. He starts doing, you know, membership stuff. And maybe in six months, he thinks... Do I really need this membership anymore? I'm making money online. Not sure that I really need this. He's going to be kind of factoring in some things. And you know what's going to pop into his mind? Oh, my website is through there. So if I cancel, I will have to rebuild my website. I'll have to you know, move it and do all that, a bunch of hassle stuff. Chances are you're going to pull him out for a few more months before... Uh, he makes the decision to go ahead and pull the plug. Uh, and he may very well never make that decision uh, because of the hassle. Also, if there's something, maybe you do uh, some kind of 4X membership site, okay? And you run a contest and people get statistics on how good they did. Then what's going to happen? They're going to be thinking about, I don't want to lose my stats, <laughs> you know, so they're going to, a uh, perfect example of this, let me tell you, a, uh, a buddy of mine has a chess membership site, and he does that very thing with the stats. Every time 
he facilitates a couple of things, really. The membership allows people to play chess games with other people's uh, or other people, sorry, online and, you know, have these like tournaments and matches and all this kind of stuff. Well, it keeps track of everything. So whenever you play somebody, if you win, you get a certain score. And it keeps track of your chess score. Mm. You get a little graph of your progress. And it has lessons on there for learning better how to play chess. And, I mean, there's some people on there that would scare you. They are so, I mean, I like to play chess, but it is not my life. But these people, I wonder if they ever do anything else but play chess. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but he has, like put together such a package that if they cancel their subscription, it's like, whoa, the things that they lose. So that's going to keep them every single month. They got to keep, uh, keep going because they don't want, uh, they've got community. Definitely. They're interacting with one another. It's an excellent model. Uh, this chess place. And he actually, I can tell you, uh, what's the URL chess.com. Can you believe he got that URL? Uh, he had to pay some big bucks for it, I think. But anyhow, a buddy system. If you can group somebody with somebody else, ooh, what's going to happen there? Let me tell you. Let's say Jer Jerry uh, signs up and Matt signs up, and there we don't even care what the niche is, okay? That's totally irrelevant. Find something that you can come up with to get people together. And uh, maybe there's some kind of contest or, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, like who would get the best results or, or make something the more creative or whatever. Okay, but you, you team two people together and you have this thing that's like a three-month-long project. So now you've got Jerry and Matt, and Jerry on the second month, he's considering dropping out. But he's going to be talking, he's got like an obligation to Matt. You know, Matt's wanting to finish this thing. Matt's wanting to win. And uh, that's going to keep him on. Just like with, uh, you know, with exercising, with working out, what I found uh, is general about all people. If I say, you know, uh, okay, I'm going to start working out, and I'm going to, the, even if I, um, let's say I got a membership at a gym, which, by the way, I do, okay? Uh, so this is really, this hits home because it's a very good analogy. Sometimes in the morning, I don't really feel like going, <laughs> right? I'm kind of tired. I'm sleepy. I realize this is not something I have to do. I don't feel like going. But I go because my buddy is there waiting for me. Uh, Got to go, okay? So I'm keeping my membership, even if at some times I get discouraged and don't feel like I really want to. I got to go because there's, there's people there that are pulling for me. There's people there that, uh, you know, we keep each other going. There will be times that they don't feel like doing it. But I push them. Let's go. We got to do this. And if you're by yourself, it's easier to just cut it off and forget it. So if you can develop some kind of buddy system uh, like what I just mentioned, that's going to do, do wonders for your retention. Let's look at some other ways of retention. A storehouse of knowledge. This is just so much stuff that they can't possibly go through it and they don't want to lose it, lose access to it, right? If you were to, like me, I buy books. I buy books like crazy. I don't read half the books that I buy, but I buy tons of them because they're there and I have access to them. Someday I'm going to read them, right? <laughs> If somebody was to come to my house right now and say, tomorrow at 12 noon, we are coming and we're going to take all of your books and there's nothing you can do about it, I would be like, I would be in there reading, right? right? I would be stressing because I'm going to lose this. Like, I haven't read it. It hasn't been important enough to me up to this point because I have the time. Someday I'll be able to have to do that. Uh, and same thing with your membership site. If you've got so much stuff there, you can actually uh, create this, I'm going to hold on to it just because someday I might have the opportunity to get to this and I don't want to lose that. Uh, and especially if you can tie that in with uh, you know, having something like 
a contest or something going on or stats that uh, that they're keeping stats as they progress through something. Uh, definitely keeps the uh, keeps the retention uh, very high. Bribery. Give them something for free so they feel guilty. No, n nothing else. I think I need to say about that. Uh, send them something, and uh, you know whether it's chocolates in the mail or you would think like right. Um, I just said I didn't need to say anything, but I'm going to. <laughs> if if you're charging forty-seven to fifty-seven dollars a month, right? If around if you find out that around the third month you get a lot of people drop off, then right maybe a couple weeks before that cutoff time you actually spend money and send a box of chocolates to everybody that is at that time period okay and that 10 15 dollars that you just spent probably going to buy you at least another month uh, and it's definitely worth it worth the investment active action surveys polls voting get these people involved the more you have community the more retention you're going to have that's it's two equations that work together level loyalty this is another great way i mentioned this kind of uh, briefly earlier the way that it works though is this you have somebody sign up as your membership and they get assigned a certain level because they're a newbie right as they accomplish things you put you you stipulate all these different things that can be done and as they accomplish things they get bumped up my buddy on the chess site he does this very thing uh, as they win more games as they're there you know their stats increase or whatever they get bumped up until the, you know they're a grand master based on uh, all this different stuff and they don't want to lose that who would want to work themselves all the way up to a black belt in karate and then uh, have to start back over as a white belt nobody right same thing here uh, you assign levels you give them what they have to do to attain that and then as they and it it does not have to be tough stuff but it's you want it to be stuff that it takes them a while to do <laughs> because then they get bumped up to the next level and they keep going they get bumped up to the next level this is something that psychologically uh, it, it keeps people going because they're climbing they're not doing the same thing over and over again they're actually climbing and uh, once they get up really high especially if you got like five or six levels and they get up to the top they're not going to cancel just because they don't want to lose that and have to start over maybe you know maybe they don't have time for your membership site this month but there's no way that they're going to cancel just so that they can start over in two months level loyalty use it one last word on content bait them something that they'll need to come back frequently to access uh, something that preferably doesn't need to be updated one nice way that you do this is if you can set up a video that they can't download but maybe uh, a series of videos that teaches them very you know something that's very very beneficial to them but they can't download uh, but they will likely want to come back to that in the future and reevaluate it start small on your content you don't have to have I know I didn't say you want more stuff than they can possibly go through but that's not hard to do you gotta you know you don't want in other words you don't want somebody to come into your membership site and download everything that's in there and in one evening and then that's it there's no reason for them to hang out they can cancel okay but you don't have to have everything in place because you're not gonna get 5,000 members overnight um, you know you might could get 500 if you've got a pretty pretty good JV relations but you're not gonna get 5,000 and especially if you're starting off as a beginner in this that's just not gonna happen so develop an idea write up your game plan and then start to start to implement it and work in phases and take small steps as you grow and you will find actually there's no way for you the ones that the membership sites that fail are the ones that set up everything and then don't do anything and change it they just add new content they don't make any changes you don't even get that in your mind that that's gonna happen you're going to have to set your membership site up take feedback from people that subscribe and make implement the proper changes and have it grow in the right direction coming up next we're gonna start looking at some of the technical stuff as far as actual platforms that you would use uh, to uh, 
you know, implement to create your site and how you're going to get paid, all that kind of stuff. That's what we'll talk about in the next video. Technical considerations. This is where things are going to get, you know, scary for everybody. <laughs> no, not really. It's not hard. It's really not. Uh, even if you've never set up a website in your entire life, you can do this. Okay. I don't have tutorials on, you know, installing WordPress because it's not hard and they have tutorials out there already. Plus, if you go with the hosting company that I use, there's, there's a little button in there you push to install WordPress and it asks you some questions and boom, WordPress is installed. Nowadays, inside of WordPress even, it's a no-brainer. Uh, if you want to install a theme or if you want to install a plugin uh, or, or all kinds of stuff, it's basically automatic. It's, it's so easy. But we're going to talk about some member management issues, uh, processing your subscriptions. Basically, um, all we want to deal with is how you're going to, you, you, potentially you're going to have, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 members, uh, hopefully fairly quickly. And you got to deal with a lot of stuff. You got to deal with uh, cancellations. You got to deal with updating credit card details. You got to deal with people having access and support and all this kind of stuff. And you want to be able you know, to do that uh, as simply as you can. Then we're going to talk about what a CMS is, site layout and how you should structure things, a fast, easy, and professional website, how to get that. And uh, I'm going to give you some tips, again, what I use. And even, um, like, even though I've set up lots and lots of membership sites, I've got it pretty much fine-tuned to... Uh, something that's really simple but still has professional results and works fantastic. Getting paid. We're going to talk about how uh, you can take solutions that are out there for that. And a step-by-step, -step, which is actually the most technical phase. Um, I'm not actually going to demonstrate it again but uh, because there's tutorials for everything. But that's where you are going to probably learn a lot. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun. Seriously, don't get discouraged, though. If you're not very technical, it's not going to be hard. And if you are a little bit technical, I think you're probably actually going to like it. So platform options. Where could we go as far as getting our membership site up? MemberGate is probably the Cadillac of membership uh, websites. Uh, and it's consequently also very expensive. It's a fully integrated totally turnkey solution. They actually host everything. They do it all. You have very little that you have to work with as far as, you know, technical stuff, getting things to work. They're going to handle it all. Uh, it's very high-end, very robust. It's got a built-in CMS, which stands for Content Management System. They have great support, but again, it is very expensive. Wish List Products. This is a plug-in for WordPress. It's a very simple and extremely reliable solution. Integrates with a lot of payment processors, which is a nice, convenient uh, feature. And it also is uh, beneficial for the fact that it's self-hosted. In other words, you put it on your server. You do with it what you want. Once you learn how to use it, it's actually very straightforward. And I recommend uh, going with that route. It's what I actually do uh, myself. One-time payment. With MemberGate, you're going to pay monthly. With wishlist products, like I said, you just pay it once, and that's it. You own it. You can even, I uh, think they have, like you can buy a some kind of, uh, for a couple hundred dollars extra, you, you get a license to use it on as many websites as you want. So you can set it up, you know, pay once and put it on as many membership sites as you like. Very nice. A member. This is a script that installs on your server. Again, very reliable. I think it's 140 bucks, maybe right now. Uh, they have some kind of promotion with the. Sometimes they do something where there's a free installation, and sometimes you pay. I don't know, but whatever they got going on right now, just check it out. Uh, but what that gives you is integration with other uh, payment solutions and billing. Most of the plugins you have to pay for. They do have really good support. It's a one-time charge as well. It is, though, for one site. So you pay one time and you get a license for that one site. As I mentioned, my preference is wishlist products. Not only because of the fact that if you, get the, uh, if you get the license that gives you unlimited, you can put it on as many membership sites as you want, 
but I like the flexibility of it, and I really like the way that it works. It's actually very simple and robust. I have used a member as well. Um, I don't mind that. It works pretty good. I find the integration with WordPress is much better with wish list, uh, wish list products because it's, it's geared as a plugin for WordPress. Okay, so it's made to work with it, and hiding stuff. It's, it gives you a lot of flexibility with hiding stuff for different levels of membership access. For example, I could write a blog post, and I could have my silver members be able to read the blog post, but the gold members can't read the blog post. It doesn't even show up for them. Uh, that kind of flexibility, and vice versa. So that's why I like it. Plus, it's. Uh, it's not hard to install and very easy to use. So CMS, what is CMS? Stands for Content Management System. Some examples are just blogs. WordPress, Blogger, Drupal, Joomla even is one. Um, all of those different platforms. And you can try all of them if you want to. What I And I've basically tried all of them. I've done Drupal. I've done Joomla. Uh, I've done Blogger. I even have some Blogger blogs still because I use them for generating traffic. But um, WordPress is my blog platform of preference. It's easy to create, edit, and manage all of your content without having to know all that complicated technical HTML and FTP mumbo jumbo. Uh, you just go in and you start typing. You use a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. You use it just like a word processor. You type stuff. You can uh, make it bold. You know, you can make it bigger. You can format things, justify left and right, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you use it just like a word processor. So you don't have to deal with how it looks, right? You just concentrate on making the content. Because it's template-based, it's easy to change the site look, and it's easy to make your website look really nice. There are tons of templates for, for, for WordPress, for example. Uh, there's free ones and there's ones that you buy. You simply install a template and it changes the whole format and look at your website in an instant. And if you wanted to update things and make it look different, totally easy to do. You go get another template, you pop it in there, you don't have to worry about any of your content. It just changes the whole look of the site. Very, very nice. So what are our options? I'm recommending WordPress. You go to WordPress.org. It's free. It's easy to update the content, like I said before. It's even easy to install WordPress uh, and update it. It can be customized. You can. There's tons of programmers out there that totally know how to do, uh, you know, all kinds of programming stuff in WordPress. It's open source, so all the stuff is in there. All the code for it. They can make it do exactly what you want it to do. There are lots of widgets and plugins available. Widgets are little tiny applications that will work on the WordPress site. And uh, plugins are usually more robust. They do stuff maybe in the background to make the site work better. Uh, support for static pages. So you can have your WordPress blog be like a, a regular website. It doesn't have to look like a blog. It can look just like a website, but WordPress is managing all of the pages that are there. Matty Blaze Hosting, one-click installation of your WordPress blog. So, if uh, you know you get a, if you don't have a hosting account, you get a hosting account inside your cPanel. You click a button, you got an instant website. Membership site layout samples. Think about your primary offers. What do you want them to see right away? And then, uh, if you can't find any membership site samples, all you got to do is go to Google. Do a search for Powered by Wish List Member. What you will see is Google actually will find all these sites that have Wish List installed. What happens then? You go in, you check it out, you see how they're laying everything out. And uh, if there's something that is convenient, if there's something that strikes you as being annoying, you can obviously eliminate that. You can include things, you know, you can get good ideas for laying things out. But with the primary offer, like what are they really, really buying when they sign up? You want to make sure that they see that right away. That's why I say when they join, if you've got core content that gives them all the beginner elements, if you know that your target audience mainly is beginners, 
then when they join, you want them to be dropped right there so that they can find that uh, very quick and easy. Otherwise, they're just going to be like, this is too difficult, and they're going to unsubscribe, right? They're going to cancel. So think about what it is that they're really buying and make that available to them right away. Now, getting paid, this is probably one of my favorite topics here. Uh, do you want to do the accounting for a 1,000 people? <laughs> probably not. Listen to me. I'm about to tell you the solution uh, that I use, and I'm going to say with that solution, this can still be difficult, and that solution takes care of a whole lot of hassle that I, that I would have if I didn't use it, and that solution is simply ClickBank. Uh, you can go to ClickBank, and you can set up a recurring product, and that will be essentially your membership site. They will take care of all the payment processing. Uh, it's easy to get it set up and implemented, especially if you use wish list. It will, um, you know, it integrates right with ClickBank, and it's easy to do affiliate tracking and payments. And I totally, totally advocate using, uh, you know, affiliates and and uh, giving them a healthy, like, give them fifty percent easily because these are going to be people that are going out there working for you, getting you new members every single month, and that's how your membership is going to grow. Again, leverage is what it's all about. So instead of you going out there having to do all the work, it'd be better if you had 10 or 20 people out there getting you, you know, getting you subscribers. And yeah, they get 50% of the cut, but it's, you know, it's a lot more beneficial to you in the long run. Some people don't like ClickBank because the customer can go in there and just cancel or refund, you know, at whim, and ClickBank will take care of that. Uh, but I have found. Do your very best, and it's not going to be, you know, give them the content that they really want. You will have people that are just jerks, you know, and they go and they cancel on you or something, or they refund and they stole all your content. But by far, that's not going to be the majority of people, and just, you know, consider it cost of doing business. What does it take to set up all of this stuff? Let's say I'm going to try to do this over the weekend. Well, WordPress is free. So you're going to go to WordPress.org, you're going to download it, no cost there. Wishlist member, the script that I have recommended, 97 bucks for the single license, and I think it's 297 for the unlimited one, I'm not positive. But I will tell you this, if you have potential at all, any interest in setting up multiple membership sites, buy the multi, uh, the unlimited license, buy that first, because you get it cheaper when you when they first refer it to you. It's cheaper than if you were to upgrade later. You still pay a little bit more if you upgrade later on. So in other words, if you decide, oh, I'm just going to get the single one, and then later on you're like, you know, I really like this. I'm going to set up some more membership sites. Upgrade me to the unlimited license. It will cost you more. Just be aware. ClickBank submission, I think, is 50 bucks still. Uh, but that's going to just be, you know, you got to get your product in there uh, so that they can process everything, and it's well worth the investment plus you get your product out in front of all these affiliates so that membership site you know people could pick it up and start promoting it that you don't even know anything about them and they're not members hosting seventy nine dollars a year and that includes a domain I think they do have a monthly a monthly charge as well that's like eight bucks or something like that if you want to just go monthly all right, here is your tactical plan. I'm going to do my best to wrap everything up right now in this video, but we've got, I think, about four more slides. Your tactical plan, get your content together, set up and test everything on the site. You want to make sure it's all working, including signups and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and ClickBank facilitates that very, very nicely because you can get the product in there it won't be active, right? It'll be in test mode. But you can get it in there, and you can actually get your links already set up so that you can click. It'll do like a test transaction. It won't charge your actual card. Uh, and you'll see the whole process start to finish and make sure that it works uh, good for you. Once the site is set up and tested, focus 100% on building your membership. In other words, whatever kind of traffic methods you're going to use or JV relationships or whatever. Reinvest your income for the first month in getting better content, new and fresh, uh, more content created, and also uh, possibly consider doing some advertising. 
No full-blown updates until month number three. You want to get enough people in there and enough usage, enough familiarity that, number one, at three months you know that it's, it's, it's working, right? You can see that the membership is growing. Uh, but then also you want to get some feedback before you make any big changes to the membership area. Acquire a staffed expert to create the content and moderate the membership site after the second month. And I would say after the second month is completed. You want to just, you know, that person maybe that you've been hiring for writing some articles, see if they will do, like, uh, you know, come up with some. You'll know at that point how much you can afford because of how many members you've got and how it seems to be growing. But see if there's something that you can work out with them where they're just working that thing for you every single month. Even if, let's say, you were making $5,000 a month on that site, which is not real hard to do, right? If, uh, if they're paying $10 and you got 500 members, there you go. Uh, but even if they're going to make a little bit more than you at that point, I mean, still, it's worth it because you're not going to do anything. <laughs> you know, you've got it all set up, and now you're basically going to let them create the content and interact with all the people. You're just going to kind of be a manager. Uh, but if they want, you know, $2,000 a month in order to do that, then I, I would say it's a good deal. Just because even if they wanted $3,000 a month to do it, it still might be beneficial to you because you're going to probably, uh, you're going to set this up, and as it grows, there's going to be other things that you're going to do with it. Uh, if if you're the expert, fine, and you want to do that, that's fine. You keep all the money. But what I'm kind of thinking of here is, um, you know, if you want to grow, if you want to set up another membership site doing something else, uh, and then you're kind of managing all these membership sites, eventually, you know, after just a couple of them, you're going to be making more than everybody. Trust me. Outsource as much as you can and enjoy the reward of your hard work of getting all this set up, doing all of the research, uh, and then sit back and just, you know, enjoy the benefits. That's basically the process. Here's a step-by-step, -step, the technical things that you're actually going to want to do for the most part. Register your domain. you got to get your uh, hosting set up. Install WordPress. Change your WordPress theme, and for the first time I'm mentioning themes to you, WordPress by itself is going to look pretty lame. Uh, it's going to look very lame because <laughs> it just comes with a very basic template. Um, for usability and the general look of it, I recommend WP Theme Thesis. Uh, and the, the thesis theme is really, really nice. It's robust. I use it for all my membership sites now just because it, the, the, the look of it and the way it interacts and the way it works totally nice install wish list member okay which is the script for the actual membership site and I will mention here real briefly WordPress has some facilities for blocking uh, sites uh, blocking pages based on your password or whatever you don't want to fool with that stuff it's really a big hassle uh, it doesn't take into account the, the, all the stuff that we want to do as an actual membership management. That's what Wishlist does, is it is the management of those members. And it allows us to control access as well. Add content. So after we've got WordPress installed, we've got our own website up online, got WordPress installed, got the theme looking slick, um, got the membership script installed, and then we're going to dump in the content. Configure your membership levels. Maybe you want certain members, uh, you know, silver level to access certain content, whatever. Configure all that stuff, and then you go in and you protect the content. So the way that it works, and again, I'm not doing tutorials for this because all these products have the tutorials already. Uh, but the way that it works is you install the wishlist member, you set up your membership levels. Then you go into your content, and each page you would say, block this content, you know, protect this content, actually is the terminology. Uh, and then you grant access to specific levels. You check off what levels you want to have access to. One really nice thing that I like about Wishlist, and this is the, uh, this is the big canon that I didn't tell you about yet. Wishlist has a facility to do what is called dripped content. 
like sequenced content. And what you can do is you can have your whole entire membership site with a whole year's worth of content. But whenever somebody signs up today, they get access to a certain amount of that content. Then 30 days later, whatever you specify, you can do 15 days, 20 days, doesn't matter, whatever you set. Let's say the next month, they get access to another batch of content automatically. You don't do anything about it. So you have the whole year laid out where after they, uh, and it actually moves them to another level automatically. So they sign up, they get access to the content, a month later they get into a, they get bumped up to another level and they get access to new content. 30 days later they get access to new content, 30 days later, and it's billing them the whole time, right? And giving them access and it's all done automatically. The way this is set up, if you do it through ClickBank, uh, and I might add that at this point, after you protect the content, you would then submit your product to ClickBank, uh, do all this stuff for approval there. But the way it's set up, if you work it that way, is if they go to ClickBank and they cancel, their membership cancels. It's automatic. If they do a refund, their membership cancels. All right, now we're going to step things up a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about, well, I said I was going to do one. Uh, this is going to be the last video, but I tell you what, let's take a quick break. Think about the stuff that we just talked about, okay? And then in the next and last video, this I really promise this is going to be the last one, we're going to talk about some of the ways to grow your membership site. What we're going to talk about here is ways to help get your list to explode. Not actually uh, explode, but get your membership subscriber list to just really take off. And uh, a couple of things that you can do really that are exponentially beneficial let affiliates give away trial offers this is something that's real nice that you can do inside of uh, Clickbank and the membership script uh, but you can even pay people you know pay them a dollar pay them five dollars for a trial subscription if they'll get people to sign up uh, and in the long term that'll work out really good for you but really it's a nice thing if you just a lot of affiliates if you just tell them uh, maybe in their products they can feature a free 30-day trial to your membership as a bonus uh, and that's something that's really you know it's beneficial to you and them you get subscribers and uh, then it's your job you know to keep them and then they get something additional of value that they can offer to their uh, either their subscribers or their people that purchase their products here's what happens uh, somebody goes and buys a product in a certain niche and then they get access a free subscription to your offer so they go there they sign up they use you know whatever coupon or something to get subscribed and then the next month they're gonna be billed automatically so if they hang out they're gonna get billed okay after 30 days they get automatically billed if they don't cancel and then you actually the affiliate is gonna get paid from the first month's billing so you actually don't get paid until day 60 until they hang out for the third month that is just one model. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, in fact, what I do, which I have had a lot of success with, is I pay affiliates on a recurring basis. So they will get, um, and yeah, it means they get paid a lot. <laughs> but they they really, the affiliates love that. And uh, that, that gives them more incentive to go out and, you know, uh, really hustle to get people to subscribe. But you can work out an arrangement where you're just going to give them 100% of the money uh, for the first paid month. So they promote your free giveaway and uh, the people stay and then the, at the end of the 30 days they get billed again. The affiliate gets that money and then at the 60th day you're going to get your money. Uh, and if you've done your job and your retention's good, you know, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Here we're talking about swapping offers. You can provide a reciprocal offer with another membership site. You know where uh, you you sign up, people. You know you offer a free free month to my subscription, and I'll offer a free month to yours. And if it's something that's complimentary, you know it'll benefit the members. It's not just the same kind of stuff, but it's complimentary. Maybe a different twist your website handles something a little bit different than theirs does then that's a win-win situation for everybody because the customer gets access to something that 
you know it will be beneficial to them that they wouldn't normally have and you get additional members and they get additional members so it's kind of like a cross promotion when someone signs up for your offer you give them a free 30-day trial to another membership site that's another uh, excellent solution and you have that thing working out for them as well so when someone signs up for their membership site you give them they give uh, a free 30-day trial to your membership site Okay, so they do the same for you. It's like a back and forth thing. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And listen, I want to mention, today in internet marketing, folks, um, we got to take care of each other. It's not just all let's let's beat out everybody and be the best internet marketer. Um, there's some there's some real serious stuff going on in the industry, really that encompasses all of us, and we got to pull together. And you see this in a lot of industries. Once they mature, the big players realize that if they don't work together they're going to just kill each other and uh, that's what we don't want to do we got we want to learn to band together and and, uh, and work on this in something that's going to be a mutually profitable solution for all of us let's take a look at how the list grows and what you can expect so you don't get I don't want you to get discouraged with one affiliate working for you Let's say that they get you two signups a day. Um, one's going to quit, and then after 30 days, you would have 30 members because half of those quit. Now, that is a ridiculous number. Okay, I have not found that to be the case with my membership sites. But, uh, in, in fact, for in the first 30 days, I'm looking at maybe, maybe a, a 3% dropout. Okay, but let's say that that happens on a consistent basis with 10 affiliates what's gonna happen 20 new signups a day 10 quit after 30 days I got 300 members after 60 days I'm gonna have 600 members let me do something for you here this is the power of membership sites after 60 days 600 members times let's do 30 bucks eighteen thousand dollars folks um, and even if you had to split that let's divide it by two let's say that you have to split that with your affiliate so you only get half of it that's nine thousand I want to be very fair and not you know present to you some, some that doesn't have the hidden stuff revealed right nine thousand um, dollars I just launched a membership membership site if I could say it correctly that has 400 members and I charge $47 a month in two weeks I got those 400 members so what do you think about that I mean it's a real deal and that's with uh, granted this is with uh, I would say 75 percent of those 400 are affiliates sent those okay and uh, the other 25 percent are I get the full I get the full membership dues because I sent those myself. Okay, now that's where this is going. The number of members that you get, you will reach a point that it's like, okay, I'm ready to quit my day job, and it's not that many members, really. If uh, let's say 300 members times 30, that's nine thousand dollars. I know people right now that would love to be making nine thousand dollars a month and that's at 300 members that's not cut it in half and that's hundred and fifty members forty five hundred dollars a month um, you know there's a lot of people that would love to make forty five hundred dollars a month I mean right now think about this what would it take if you're because I realize I'm dealing with a lot of different people there are some uh, people that are good internet marketers and they just never done an inter a uh, a membership site and they might be interested in this course right there are some people that are beginners and they've never done anything online if that is you think about what it would take for you to quit your job okay how much money would you want to be able to quit your job and still be comfortable and making the you know making the same or better money and doing what you want to do and working from home okay if that's four hundred dollars I mean four thousand dollars sorry if that's four thousand dollars which a lot of people you know aren't even making that much money divide it by 
um, you know, whatever, how much you want to charge. What is it worth? If it's worth uh, $25, then that's how many members you got to have every month, 160. And it's going to be growing. 160 members is nothing. I mean, you can do a uh, you can do a pay per click campaign and get that in uh, you know in a weekend probably. Uh, and that's not very difficult to do at all. So this is where it's at: membership sites charging residual, recurring uh, every month, and then you provide new content for them. You spend your month, you know, managing. Maybe like typically, what I do is uh, I'll spend some time in the morning going through the administrative stuff. I'll have somebody maybe uh, taking care of technical support. I, I outsource that. I just don't I don't deal with it myself. And uh, I can focus on creating content. I can focus on playing racquetball <laughs> and going flying in my new airplane. That's what I love. Uh, so that's it. Thanks so much for joining me. I, I sincerely hope that, like I said, if I can help one person quit their job and uh, – set one of these sites up, uh, then I'll, I'll feel like I did my job. Continuity Cash Secrets. You can make serious cash one small monthly recurring payment at a time. I, for one, absolutely love membership sites. I love continuity uh, opportunities. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video course is membership sites, specifically the kind that involve us getting a regular monthly recurring income. Let's take a look first at, well, before we even do that, let me just explain to you uh, that of all the things with Internet marketing that I have done over the years and all the things that I have experience with uh, membership sites are pretty awesome for a variety of reasons and we're going to touch on some of those in the next slide but I just want to express to you that this if you're looking for something that's a whole lot of fun to set up a whole lot of fun to run uh, will involve potentially you getting you know your hands dirty as far as a little bit of technical stuff uh, that isn't very difficult it's not hard uh, especially with all the instructions that are out there, uh, and something that makes, you know, puts you in the position to be getting money every single month and something that easily can go viral. And by that, what I'm talking about is you setting up something successfully and then uh, allowing other people, people that have joined your membership site, to promote that for you. And you just, you know, magnify the efforts of one by leveraging all your members and, uh, getting even more members, let me tell you, memberships are the thing to do. Uh, let's talk about first the market, uh, kind of an overview really basically is what we're going to look at right here. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you why membership sites are so incredibly uh, powerful. Why membership sites are great is what we're going to look at in the next slide. Just going to go over some of the things that I particularly love about them. We're going to look at the different types of membership sites and the two markets. We're going to look at a good market versus a great market. How to choose target markets, how to choose great target markets. Getting ideas for your membership sites and the 30 second do or die test. And then I even have uh, some action steps for you to do and some, uh, you know, actual kind of a game plan for you and some charts or uh, actually checklist, I should say, so that you can go through and make sure that you got everything set up and you haven't missed anything. Why membership sites are great. I've already mentioned the monthly residual income. Let me tell you something about successful marketers, uh, and not only marketers, but successful people in general. People who make a lot of money, uh, they do it usually. Now, there are exceptions to this, okay, but usually... It's because they have multiple streams of revenue. Most wealthy and uh, you know successful people don't owe their success or their wealth to one particular thing. Most successful internet marketers do not owe their success to one product that they're selling or promoting or one thing 
uh, that they're due. Having multiple streams of revenue is something that uh, enables us, you know, to uh, rise above the tide, so to speak, because if we have a low month over here in this one area, that doesn't so much affect us because chances are in another stream of revenue, we've got an even better month. Okay, so it really tends to balance things out. Now, residual income is even something that we can factor into that that makes it even better. Residual, especially monthly residual income, means that month after month, we've got consistent money coming in. We, essentially, we have set up our efforts. We have uh, one effort that we put forth, and month after month, we get rewarded for that effort. Really, with a membership site, we can easily set up something where, uh, you know, you, you set up one membership site, you'll find out it's so fun and easy to get going, and then you can move on while that one's running. You can move on and set up another one in a completely different niche if you want. And what we've got there is multiple streams of revenue, residual income, and each one of those membership sites, it's a lot of people paying, right? And it doesn't, the beauty of this is you're going to see it does not, you do not have to have some 5,000 member uh, membership site to make money, not at all. 500 members can make you more than you're probably making, uh, you know, if you've got a regular day job right now, uh, 500 members can make you more than that easily. We get passive cash flow. It just keeps on working. There's a lot of different models that we can set up with the membership site, and you're going to really control how much you're able to make depending on what you choose to do. Just as an overview, we're going to get into this a little bit later on in more detail, but just as an overview, I could set up something where uh, somebody pays one time and they get access to a membership site where there's a lot of content there and they just have it, you know, maybe they access it for a year, maybe they access it for a lifetime, uh, but that doesn't require much effort from me. And the membership site, one thing I really love about membership sites is making uh, the deliverability uh, very easy for the customer, right? And it looks nice and robust. So you've got your membership site set up. You've got content in there. Again, different processes, different models that we can go through. We can have them just pay one fee. They get access to everything forever. We could have them pay a yearly fee or a monthly fee. My preference is the monthly fee. But in order to do a monthly fee, you've got to go out there and provide new, fresh content because you don't want them going through everything, and then they get to the end, and they're like, you know, why should I be a member here still? Okay, so there's more work involved with the monthly recurring membership, but that's more beneficial to you because it causes your members to stay members for a long time. Uh, stable and predictable income. Generally, if you've got a membership site, let's say you've got 500 people there. In January, if you've got 500 people, in February, you know, 400 people are not going to disappear more than likely. You're going to have a few leave, yes but you're going to have new ones come in and replace those. And so, uh, in general, it's pretty consistent. You, you've got stable and predictable income. It's not so much if you follow my guidelines, which we'll discuss later on, you're not going to pick something that this month is, is a, a hot topic and next month it's not going to be, or you know something that's seasonal. Like You can make a lot of money on pay-per-click uh, with certain affiliate offers during the Christmas season or Thanksgiving or something like that. But the rest of the time, that stuff goes up and down like crazy, right? The the kind of search you just go to Google and you can see the search results on a lot of keywords and you can see it going up and down. It looks like a roller coaster, uh, not very consistent, not very stable. This is gonna be. You're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to pick something that is not gonna go in and out with the tide, but uh, is gonna you know hold its own. And nice thing is, when you combine the fact of I've got 500 people and I've picked, you know, a, a good target for my for my model, then you got consistency on all points and it's not going to just totally drop off. High customer value. Each and every one of your customers is going to be worth a lot more than 
if you had a typical one-off sale. So if I uh, were to, you know, sell an ebook, maybe I sell that ebook for twenty-seven bucks. Well, that's all good and all. You know, if I sell five hundred copies of that, that's great. Even if I sold a thousand copies of it, that's fantastic. But what happens after that sale? That's it. It's done for me. So if there's a way that I could come to, uh, you know, maybe I develop an ebook or a video course or something. If there's a way that I can figure out to deliver that content in a membership site and then continue to add value by adding more to it, maybe create a, another ebook every single month or a new video course or do something, uh, there's really a, a plethora of possibilities of what you can add. But as long as I'm doing that, each and every member is going to be worth a lot more to me because it's going to be consistent every single month. Another membership fee, another membership fee. You can outsource 100% of everything I'm going to tell you about in this course. Uh, I don't actually suggest that you do that, especially your first time around. But I will be honest with you, I, I really kind of love this stuff. <laughs> I like setting up sites. I like installing uh, the scripts to get the membership going. It's really a lot of fun for me. Uh, so that being the case, you know, I do it. I do it all myself. I do most of it myself, I should say. There is some grunt work stuff that I farm out. I farm out some uh, support stuff. I don't want to deal with any of that kind of stuff. Um, I might farm out some uh, traffic generation stuff like, you know, uh, blogging, forum posting, that kind of thing. But as far as setting up the membership site and creating the stuff for it, a lot of that I do myself. And again, that's just because I enjoy it. You don't have to. I wanted to just put this in here to let you know that you can do it uh, this way if you like. You can sit back and just be a manager. Setting up a membership site is actually fast, and I should put fun, and easy. In, in just a weekend, you can go from, actually, after you go through this course, you could literally go over just one weekend to picking out a killer niche and uh, getting the site, you know, get your domain registered if you don't already have one, get the site set up, get the membership area itself in place and functioning and working. I know it sounds like that's like crazy lot of work, uh, but really it's not. And uh, I'm even going to, I'll see how much time I have here, but I'll show you if I can how quick and easy it is to get this stuff set up. Uh, and, you know, you'll see for yourself it's not that difficult. Plus, all the, all the services that I'm going to uh, suggest to you, everything that I use myself, they've all got super duper good tutorials. I don't know how much of that stuff I want to repeat. Uh, if you just go in there and watch the tutorials nowadays, uh, most of the stuff, you know, they just, they've got really good stuff to help you get through it. And even if you're kind of, uh, you know, not a technical person at all, if you're like computer illiterate and uh, challenged to techie stuff, you can still accomplish it. Uh, if you can't, <laughs> listen, uh, pay somebody over in India or, uh, you know, the Philippines or one of those countries over there, pay them 20 bucks and they'll do it for you. And that's all there is to it. Uh, in fact, a lot of the services that uh, I'm going to be mentioning even offer, you know, uh, some of them might offer a free installation, some of them offer a paid installation, but where you can just say, look, I don't want to fool with this super techie stuff, get it installed for me. And if you're willing to pay for that, no problem. You don't have to be the expert. When setting up a membership site, uh, you can take it from uh, the angle of you being a manager, really. Uh, you just kind of step back and organize things. You're kind of like a contractor. You don't actually do the roofing. You don't actually do the framing. Uh, you just coordinate everybody and let them do all the work. And I'll tell you about this. I used to work in, uh, speaking of the construction industry, I used to work in the construction industry. And the contractor is typically the one that makes the big bucks. Now, does the contractor do most of the actual work? Nope. In fact, the people that do the work are kind of like the grunts. Uh, they're the ones that don't get paid very much. And, you know, with the exception of some specialty stuff, you know, but 
uh, for the most part, they don't get paid a whole lot compared to what the contractor makes. The contractor, that's all he does is organize and, you know, put everything together when this is supposed, when this phase should be done and that phase and who, who's going to be doing the work next. You can totally do that yourself uh, in this whole project if you so desire. And you don't even have to know about the niche. That's right. You can go out there, not very hard. You can find somebody who knows about the niche and you can have them create content for you. You can have them answer questions, uh, all, all sorts of things, and you're totally clueless about the niche if you want that to be the case. Okay, if you know there's a very profitable niche and you don't know a whole bunch about it, there you are, you're set. No excuses. You don't have to know anything about it. Now, I advise, uh, whenever somebody asks me about setting up something like this, I always advise pick something that you're very passionate about, something that you enjoy, for your first site. That way you can set it up. You're involved in it from many different angles. You're going to enjoy yourself and you can actually you know, create a lot of the content yourself, which is a lot of fun. Um, does this mean you're going to have a totally turnkey, ready to go membership site over the weekend? Absolutely not because you're going to have to get content to put in there. Uh, I'm going to show you some shortcuts. You know, you could buy content. You could get some PLR content. You could get some public domain stuff. You could hire people to write content for you. There are some shortcuts, and you can go very quickly, but um, you're not going to be setting it up over the weekend. Let's just say that. That being said, though, this is something that it's worth taking the time to invest in because for the reasons that we've already mentioned, monthly residual income, passive cash flow, stable and predictable income, Lots and lots of good reasons for setting up a membership site. And it's easy to sell your membership site. <sighs> Here's a fact. A lot of the information that we would be providing to people, it's worth more than 27 bucks, right? You know it is. I know it is. Not only that, but the other services that we're going to couple together with our membership site make it worth much more than that $27. Maybe it's worth a couple hundred dollars. But... You have two choices here. You package everything all together in one big happy bundle, and you make it um, $200. Or you have a membership site that has all the stuff there as well, and you make it $20, you know, $20 $30 a month, and then you send traffic to those two offers. Which one do you think people are going to go after? Well, they're going to like the, the less expensive one for the most part. Because they know, hey, look, I got to pay twenty or thirty bucks. That's that's taking my wife out to dinner once a month. Uh, you know, that's that's no big deal. So, it's easier to sell it because you can show extreme value on one side and a low cost on the other. You don't have to charge them one hundred ninety-seven dollars because you're going to be, you know, they can pay monthly. They can access as much information as you want. We also have some time released. Uh, membership sites, which I'm going to be uh, featuring uh, later on. I'm going to mention that more. But that allows me to have maybe a year's worth of content prepared already. And as they join, let's just, you know, to keep things easy, let's say they join uh, in January, right? They get access to January's content. In February, so long as they pay their dues, they get access to February's content and so on. It continues for the full process. So they can't just come in and rip off all your content, download everything, in one month and then cancel right they actually if they want to see everything they have to go through the whole process membership site models we're gonna take a look at this and I think we'll go ahead and take a break because uh, I don't want to cram too much into your brain at one time right we all need to take a rest every once in a while there are three basic models for what we could do potentially with our membership sites Number one is a free membership. This could be, uh, you, know, you know, like a forum or a blog, MySpace, that kind of stuff. Those are sites that are essentially a free membership. With a forum, you got to go there, you got to register. Most of them, you know, you have to have an account in order to post uh, or reply to threads. So that's kind of like a membership site, but there's no cost to it. You go there, you register, you interact. The other one is a single pay. Here you pay once, and then you get access to the information 
for life. Uh, and that's definitely a good model. Even uh, like what I suggest, let's say you're not going to do a monthly recurring thing, but you have a product that you're going to sell, even if you're going to sell it like on ClickBank, for example, something like that. I highly recommend that you consider setting up a membership site and having them access that membership site in order to get the content instead of just sending them to a page where they download a PDF you know or send them to a page where they download the videos what you do is you set up a membership site it's more robust it makes the delivery you know much more sophisticated and it gives you a higher selling point because in your sales page you're able to say you're gonna get you know your your fee here even if it's a one-time fee your fee gives you access lifetime access to this membership site and for some reason just that term lifetime membership access that carries more weight than just purchasing an ebook and downloading it they feel like they get something more you know just because you're giving them that access and of course there is always the selling point that you let them know you know from time to time I am adding new content there'll be fresh content added to the members area and you'll have access to that for life you know uh, very very effective way to market your your product there instead of just you know the regular buy it and they get a download link or something number three which is my favorite is a subscription a recurring subscription where they have to pay either yearly quarterly or monthly however you want to work it but that gives me money every single, uh, you know, whatever the cycle is there, it's consistent. That's my favorite one for a lot of reasons. Generally, you're going to make more money in the long run with that model than you would with the single pay. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to take a break. And up next, we're going to take a look at a good market as well as a great market. <laughs> 